This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Stacy Jensen. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. And welcome to News 25 KPVM Local News. I'm Stacy Jensen. Deanna has the night off. It's Friday, September 2nd. Nye County Sheriff's Office has found more evidence concerning an animal cruelty case in Amargosa Valley. On August 23rd, News 25 went out to the property in Amargosa where it was the scene of a dog hoarding and breeding facility. This was to film the rescue efforts by the Nye County Sheriff's Office and Nye County Animal Control who executed a search warrant on the property located on Farm Road. This facility was housing almost 300 Armenian gamfer or Chaka Caucasian mixed shepherds that were reportedly in poor condition. When filming the property, we notified Nye County Sheriff's Office officers on scene of a suspected animal pit burial site. Captain David Brokowitz with the Nye County Sheriff's Office explains what they have now found. NCSO investigators and ASPCA investigators returned to the scene in Amargosa today to execute a warrant to excavate what had been identified as possible burial sites. During the excavation, several bodies of dogs were found in various stages of decomposition. We would like to thank the Amargosa Dairy who donated their time and equipment to assist in this ex excavation. The investigation is ongoing and no further information will be released until next week. These deceased animals have been located along with dozens of other deceased puppies in freezers on the property owned by an attorney out of Las Vegas that made arrangements with Vasily Platnov and Oksana Higgins of Est Alpha Kennels to use while the county allowed them to move their dogs from the property in Pahrump to Amargosa. This was after neighbors complained about the noise, smells, barking, neglect, and so much more. News 25 has learned that the original 34 charges the couple was facing is now down to five at this time. And the public spoke up Wednesday's RPC meeting addressing a proposal of a solar plant on private property. The Regional Planning Commission had an item on their agenda relating to a solar plant proposed for 3751 Betty Avenue. This consisted of approximately 100 acres of a 20 megawatt solar photovoltaic energy facility for possible action of the new solar plant by Consolidated Edison. The property owned by Kennington Pahrump Nevada LLC was looking not only to develop this 20 megawatt solar photovoltaic energy facility, but also looking for a waiver application for code requirements concerning landscaping, fence height, setback, structure height relating to the same facility. Originally recommended for approval on both applications by the RPC, many of the residents in Pahrump and around the immediate area spoke up during public comment. My main concern about this whole thing is that they're putting uh, this whole farm together. Has anybody did any geological studies on what it would do to the water table that we're on? Because we, I, I'm, I'm, when I moved here three years ago, we have our own pumps, and so there's a water table underneath us, and we have an elevation certificate that tells me that something about the land shifts. So were there any geological studies along with the biological ones, and how will it affect us economically and socially? Okay, there's, there's a lot of stuff that people didn't account for, and one of the things is the weight of this farm on top of that water table. And this is a flood zone. I moved here for peace and quiet. I bought a piece of property on the corner of Hulo and Gilmore. So I look at the mountains from two different directions. Now you're going to put a seven foot cyclone fence up that says high voltage, no trespassing. Great thing to invite relatives over to look at, you know? I mean, really, I'm proud of my home, and now you're going to make it a piece of crap. And then they're going to put lights on side. You cannot tell me that those lights aren't going to bother us. You got a hundred acres of lights, and like the one person said, you know, things fly by it. They're going to go on. You can't tell me that you're not going to disturb the rabbits, the coyotes, the snakes, and everything. What are you going to do? Move them to another neighborhood? 
Um, I moved to Pahrump for multiple reasons, one of them being my health. Uh, it's <clears throat> I have COPD. It's really hard for me to breathe at times. And uh, these solar farms would not be beneficial for me or others like me. Con Edison was proposing to start the construction of this development and says the reason for this project is to produce a clean, renewable source of energy. The Board of County Commissioners has the item on their agenda for a discussion and deliberation and possible decision on September 20th. Committee member Beth Lee reminds everyone during the meeting that the RPC does not make the final decision, but the commissioners will be doing that on September 20th. Thank you. So thank you, everyone, for all of your, your public comments. We really appreciate those. But I did do want to remind you that this board is not approving the solar facility tonight. That will go on. That is a, a special use permit at the county at the Board of County Commissioners level. So there will be another meeting where they will make a final determination on the zone change, and they will hear the um, use permit. It will be September 20th, 22, in this room starting at 10 a.m. and then it'll be the meeting starts at 10 a.m. and then it'll be an agendized on the on the at for their meeting so you'll have to see where it falls in the agenda regional planning commission chairman beth lee called for the question on the vote the vote was unanimous 6-0 against the project moving forward okay so then we have a motion to deny and we have a second so i'll call for the vote starting with commissioner turner i'm good this time aye, aye. 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 Okay, then that waiver is denied. And in part two, a segment concerning the generous donation to assist the recent dog hoarding case in Amargosa Valley, we met with the employees of Irene's Casino on their donation they made yesterday. We have some lamb and rice special, and if that's not your choice, we have some chicken and rice recipe <laughs> with a side of water and snacks for the volunteers. So this is what's on the menu today. Tell me why. Because the dogs need some help. Yeah. So the group all came together and donated this. This is not from contributions that you receive from the public, but just Irene's Casino itself? That's correct. The there was an immediate need. We didn't have time to, to reach out for donations. And anything that we do for the community, we do it as a whole. We are a family here at Irene's. So this is from all of us and from the bottom of our hearts. So we're looking at all different items. Tell us about the things that don't look like dog food items. Snacks and uh, water for the volunteers. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the food for the dogs. Yeah. And so how much food do we have here? Do you know? We have 20 bags. Oh, um, can't do the math on that in poundage oh, right off the top of my head, but about 20, 20, 35 pound bags. All right. And uh, this is all going to Tales of Night County. Um, are you guys going to be doing any more um, donations to the shelter? How's it going with that? Um, we don't have plans immediately, but we're always looking to do what we can for the community and hoping that the, pour, the outpouring of donations from the community community continue as well and that it doesn't stop here that it goes on after this this was a really big situation but they're always in need and we should always be willing to give what we can all right and then of course where's Irene's located 820 East Street from wow. Nevada 9048 there's a gaming and of course uh, you guys have a full menu all the time. full menu and our restaurant hours are from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. well when I first found out about it I thought how terrible it was that these poor animals weren't being very good taken care of and um, when Julie called I quickly talked to my boss about it and uh, found out the amount of dogs that were out there and uh, I think right away we did immediate action of helping. I think it's just fantastic that we're doing this for them. It means so much to the community that you did this and I'm sure that uh, the community really appreciates Irene's Casino doing that. They will repay you by coming by. Hey, yes, come on down. Our food is great. We serve our full menu all day long from 9 to 9. And we have 50 slot machines, and we're open 24 hours for the gaming. And many people have donated large and small amounts to assist with the care and feeding of the 300-plus dogs that have been in the care and custody of Nye County. To see all the contributions, head on over to our KPVM Facebook page, 
and the GoFundMe page that's at NCSO 300 Dogs, or you can always call 775-751-7000 to get more information. We'll be back with more News 25 right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. And welcome back. Fire Chief Scott Lewis with Perum Valley Fire and Rescue gives us an update on an abandoned RV fire. So the, the Venus and Banvish, we are actually out there the next day. There was some light smoke showing from the, the area around it. Sorry, it's always like that. But um, what we have found is that we believe to be an intentional act. Uh, we're looking further into it to see who may have benefited from it or if it was just uh, fire seekers looking for something to burn in the middle of the desert. So we're looking at all aspects of it. But there were no injuries and uh, we know it to be an intentional act. It was actually a former motorhome used as a fixed structure and it was placed out in a very remote area of the desert. Uh, it was difficult for fire department access as there weren't any paved roads in the immediate area. And uh, quite frankly, we had to stage our apparatus on a pretty poorly constructed dirt road and then hand stretched multiple lines, uh, additional lengths of line onto one, uh, even to reach the sea of the fire. And Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue also responded to a vehicle fire on Leslie Street and Horn Road this afternoon. Upon arrival, they found a pickup truck on fire fully engulfed in close proximity to a home. Nye County Sheriff's deputies as well as auxiliary units also responded. The fire was extinguished with no injuries or further extensions. And September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. According to the American Cancer Society, one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. And in some cases, they may require surgery to remove the prostate, which could cause prolonged urinary or functional problems. But a relatively new robotic procedure may be able to help with that. Early data shows quicker recovery and better quality of life after surgery. Most recently, a purpose-built robot was introduced, a new generation of robots that have one cannula, so one cut. Through that comes all the instruments and camera. So only one cut in the belly of the patient to perform the surgery of removing the cancerous prostate. Dr. Jihad Kayuk is urologist for Cleveland Clinic and one of the first surgeons in the country to perform this procedure. He says there are some key differences between this kind of procedure and others available for men with prostate cancer. For example, the single incision robot goes in through the bladder, which makes it easier to focus the surgery to just where the prostate and disease are located. Dr. Kayuk says by entering through this location, it helps to minimize the individual's pain and quicken their recovery. They also no longer need narcotics after surgery and may have a significantly shorter time dealing with bladder control issues. This kind of transvesical approach is good for patients who have a cancer that's not very aggressive, moderately aggressive, a prostate that can be large, but not too large. And Cleveland Clinic has performed more than 50 cases to date. More News 25 and a cute little cat named Milo on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. And welcome back. The public is invited to a special event that's happening next Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. at Living Free Health. Mobilize Recovery. So September is Recovery Month and uh, Mobilize Recovery is an effort by people in advocacy, specifically I think Ryan Hampton and Sean O'Donnell at the Foundation for Recovery. And what they're focused on doing is um, bringing more attention to the problems that we have with, with addiction. But in regard to that, um, really it's a message of hope. Obviously addiction and, and all the attendant consequences is, is a bad thing and is a sad thing. But there is a lot of hope and there is a lot of services like the ones that we provide, for instance. But this Mobilize Recovery is going to be a nationwide bus tour 
which starts uh, Sunday the 5th in Las Vegas. Its first stop is in Pahrump at our cafe and our treatment center. And we'll proceed from there to Reno, Nevada, and then across the country all the way to New, no New York, New Jersey, and through, I, I don't know all of the states, but through a number of different states for the 30 days, and I believe that it ends in Washington State. Tuesday the 6th at 8 a.m. at our location at Mesquite and Highway 160, we're offering a free breakfast at 8 o'clock. So from about 8 to 8.30, there will just sort of be networking and kind of getting to know everybody and, uh, and the free food, of course. Um, and then we'll have a series of speakers. Ryan Hampton will be speaking. He, uh, he has testified before Congress about the opioid crisis. And he is also, um, I believe he's written two books on the opioid crisis and uh, Purdue Pharma and the Sackler family. So he's a very knowledgeable uh, person on the subject. Uh, additionally, we have the Honorable Judge Wonker who's going to come and speak. We have Sergeant Duncan from Parole and Probation. And there's some other organizations that are coming along with Foundation for Recovery and Mobilize uh, across America, including um, uh, End Overdose, which is out of Los Angeles. They're bringing the Mobilize Recovery bus and it will be parked right out in front of our cafe and there's an opportunity for everyone there to sign it, which I think is really cool because we'll all get to sign it. Ours, ours will be the first names on the bus and it's going to go all over the country and everybody will see it. The, the breakfast is provided by Living Free Cafe. The Foundation for Recovery is underwriting the breakfast, but we'll have breakfast sandwiches, breakfast burritos, cinnamon rolls, and coffee. We, uh, we've started it as really a workforce development kind of project and currently we employ five people who are in recovery and the other three who work there are first degree of separation from you know, family, it is a family disease, so family addiction, yes. Well, there is a way to register. I think we're a little bit beyond that at this point. We're going to welcome everybody, so we would love to have you all come out and, and uh, participate in this. It's going to be a really upbeat kind of uh, an event, and I might add that after the bus leaves, the bus will be leaving at about 9.30, uh, on, you know, so it can get up to Reno. Um, but there are classes that are going to continue after that for a couple of hours in our group rooms here at Living Free. Classes on uh, understanding overdose and um, just recovery oriented topics at livingfreehealth.org or 775-505-1625. Tuesday, September 6th, 8 a.m. and uh, that's at Mesquite and Highway 160 at Living Free Cafe and Living Free Health. And we want to take some time to introduce you to a cute, super sweet little guy named Milo at the Nye County Animal Shelter. Today's Save a Pet segment is made possible by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi, I'm Darby here at the Nye County Animal Shelter. Today, joined with Milo, uh, which is the bestest cat in the entire world. He is this very, very thick um, oh, orange tabby. He is a big cat with these beautiful, really light green eyes, extremely affectionate. Milo is actually um, well adjusted to two other cats who are also in his kennel, but he is one of the three that is able to be adopted completely alone. Um, he does have two other friends in his kennel that we will introduce to you guys. But Milo is extremely affectionate, super duper loving, can't get enough pets just a sweet little boy. You can come down to the Knight County Animal Shelter. They have a room specifically for you to interact with your new pets. They're at 1580 East Siri Lane, right across the street from the Knight County Treasurer's Office. You can give them a call at 775-751-7020. And they also have a Facebook page, which is the Knight County Animal Shelter. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Oh, those clouds are still rolling in. Stand over the mountains, though. John's going to have a full weather update for us coming up in just a moment. And we have some very special guests that will be joining us after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by... Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. 
Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios on a Friday just before Labor Day. Woo! Everybody celebrate and uh, celebrate the weather, too. Let's take a look at this weather map. Fernley and Fallon, unseasonably hot at 101, 102 degrees. Carson City is right in there, about 97. Cool spot in the state today. Again, Tonopah, 95 degrees, 96 out in Goldfield. They're chasing 107 in <laughs> Beatty. Oh, my gosh, 111 is our hot spot today in Amargosa and Vegas. Checking in at 107, checking in poolside because it is fuego. Out in Death Valley, forget it, the pool's dried up. It's 123 degrees and here in the Paradise of Prove. Let's take a look, it's 106. That's our current temperature. Ooh, my pool might be drying up. 108 just a little bit earlier. South Southwesterly winds at seven miles per hour. Taking the edge off slightly. I don't mind like light winds at these temperatures. I, I don't feel like I'm turning into like a convected oven human jerky experiment. Sun rose this morning at 616. It's given up the ghost this evening at 709. We'll see a gorgeous sunset under uh, mostly clear skies. Beautiful star watching tonight. And a low of 81 degrees. Feels pretty good as we head on into the week. What do we see? Bunch of hot temperatures and clouds for three, four, five days. No real chance of rain. But the temperature is averaging 105, 108 degrees. Next couple of days, Monday looks like 108. Tuesday, 110. That's about the peak of the week. And a good time to head back to work into the AC. Oh, my gosh. Uh, 108 uh, calming down Wednesday. Thursday calming down a little bit. Friday calming down a little bit. We end up at 102 degrees. And uh, that'll seem mercifully good, I think. <laughs> All right. So have a great Labor Day weekend. We'll see you uh, after. And uh, make your plans. Looking forward to uh, beautiful, sunshiny days. All right. Back to the desk. Here's Deanna. Thanks, John. Well, I have some very special guests with us here in the KPVM studios. From RSVP, we have Jan Lindsay, we have Willie Bear, and Tanya Brum, and mm -hmm. we're going to do a live drawing on air. I'm supposed to shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. See me shaking. All right. Do I unveil? Yes. All right. Yay. Oh, Make the sure drawing is for a $1,000 gas card. It was the great gas card giveaway. This seemed to be an appropriate fundraiser for RSVP during these high gas prices. For sure. So it's okay. okay. So I have to pick a winner. To cl I'm spinning. I'm kind of tossing them in here. And I, I am in here, so I'm not allowed to pick my own name. <laughs> and we have a winner of? Oh, this one you can read. Can you see it? Uh-oh. Nope, she can't. <laughs> not quite. Okay. It is Ann Webb. And Anne, we will be calling you today, Very and good. we will be arranging to give you your thousand dollars, thousand dollars, thousand dollar gift card. So I hope you enjoy it, and thank you for helping to support RSVP Pahrump. We actually cleared, we raised total to twenty two hundred and forty dollars, and that's through that's thanks good. to the support of local people here in Pahrump. And I'm happy to announce that. Jan is now the uh, RSVP field representative nice. for Pahrump. Yes. Okay. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations, thank you. Jan. That's great. Thank you. thank you. Well, thank you guys for coming in, and congratulations to Anne. You got a killer prize, $1,000 in gas. That's awesome. That's going to do it for us for KPVM Local News 25. I'm Stacy Jensen. Have a fabulous weekend, and don't forget, we are not here on Monday because of the Labor Day holiday, so we'll see you on Tuesday. Good night.